computer. There we go. Right, Michael, Connor, over to oh, you yeah. guys. I'll, I'll lead the way. Um, my own name is Connor Ryan. I'm the Global Spirits Ambassador with Pierce Lines Distillery. And I'm also joined with Michael Carr, who you all know from uh, Powers fame beforehand and Irish Whiskey Museum and just any kind of debaucherous den of iniquity, I suppose you would have found Michael at over the years around Dublin. <laughs> um, I I've been with Pierce Lines, the distillery side of things, since they started um, making spirits available to the public. So I suppose we'll, we'll just do a little bit of a history about um, Pierce Lines himself and our distillery before we nip into our um, flight. Pierce Lines, uh, a phenomenally interesting character in, in, in Irish whiskey. Pierce Lines himself was the first Irishman to get a master's in brewing and distilling from the British Institute of Brewing and Distilling. He then did his internship in John Lane in Powers, the original, John, uh, the original Powers distillery. After that, he went to work with Harp at Guinness Brewery. And after that, he went down to what we all call now New Middleton, the Middleton distillery that opened in 1975. He was one of the engineers who worked on the commissioning of distills down there. And after that, he moved to the USA with his family, where he went uh, brewing and distilling again, um, in, in an eth uh, more of an ethanol side of things, but still brewing and distilling. And while he was there, he set up a yeast speciality company called Alltech. And then that brought him out of brewing and distilling, uh, so to speak. But as you all know, uh, when, when you go to make a whiskey, you make a beer first, and then you distill that beer into your new make, and then you cask that off. So it was many years later, it was a couple of decades later, before Pierce went back into brewing and distilling. And in 1999, he bought a closing down brewery in Lexington in Kentucky. And then um, after that was up and running and they were producing beer, he decided to do something a little bit different. He decided he was in bourbon country. So he decided to start putting beer into bourbon barrels. Uh, he did that for a number of years and we've got a beer that's very important to us over in the USA called Kentucky Bourbon Barrel Ale. Um, that's got a huge cult following in the USA, uh, an absolutely spectacular beer. And it was one of the first beers to be put into bourbon barrels over in the USA back when he started doing it in, in late 90s. Then he had an epiphany. He was like, well, why am I buying uh, bourbon barrels to put my beer in, to age my beer in? So he decided to put a distillery on the same site as his brewery in Lexington. That distillery became known as Town Branch Distillery, and that started operating in 2008. When Pierce started distilling in the USA, he decided to bring uh, his knowledge and his, his way of distilling uh, to the Kentucky Bourbon Trail, and was actually the first person, or the first distillery on the Kentucky Bourbon Trail to pot still only their spirit. Before then, people used to use column, or they'd go column and pot. So he, he was the first person to pot still only on the Kentucky Bourbon Trail, bringing the Irish style, uh, the, his, his Irish uh, distilling influence with him. Uh, he used Scottish stills over there um, just to keep up that kind of tradition. And when he started distilling, he started distilling single malt whiskey. When Pierce started distilling single malt whiskey in the USA, um, it, was the, it was almost 100 years previous when there was a single malt produced in Kentucky. The single malt, when he started producing it in 2012, 2008, so I keep getting messages up on top of my phone, when he started distilling it in 2008, um, it, as I said, it was the first single malt to be produced in Kentucky since 1919. Now, I suppose we're sitting on what we know of is the oldest single malt in North America. It's 12, it's, um, 12 years old now at this stage. So we bring out a lot of no age statement single malt, but we also bring out single malt that is age statement. The new single malt in the USA is a seven year old. He went to the seven year old age statement single malt because seven year old would be synonymous with uh, Irish whiskey being uh, the old versions of, you know, your three star uh, Jameson's, actually George Road, a three star that was seven years old and obviously Paddy's. A lot of three star uh, seven year old whiskeys came out. But also while he was doing a single malt, he produced um, what you'd expect uh, with bourbon, with rye as well. So we've bourbon, we've rye, we've single malt um, all over in Town Branch. And the reason I'm telling you about all of these is that it's all those barrels that we use to age our spirit from Pierce Lines. But also what a lot of people might not know is when Pierce came back into distilling in Ireland in 2012, um, he brought with him Kentucky 
Vendome stills, very unique uh, and caused a bit of an uproar when they came, were brought into Ireland first because of the, um, if you look over my head there, the wash still has got four rectifying plates on top of it. And that wouldn't have been your normal kind of still configuration for Ireland. We've actually got a special inclusion in the Irish Whiskey Technical File to allow the four rectifying plates on top of our still. Uh, so because of that, we know that the spirit we're producing is quite different and quite unique. And you can ask questions about the stills and stuff afterwards. So when we started distilling in 2012, we started distilling in Carlo in O'Hara's, with Seamus O'Hara, uh, in, in the site of Seamus O'Hara's, O'Hara's beers. Um, and we started distilling there until the church was ready to take the stills. Uh, when Pierce and Deirdre Lyons decided to start um, their Irish distillery, they were looking around for a site and then they saw the church on St. James's Street. It, you know, it was closed down, falling to rack and ruin. It was the old lighting world. Um, a lot of people would actually remember buying, being in there and seeing it. And two weeks after they bought the church, it got turned into a national monument. So what was meant to be an 18 month project ended up being a four, a four year project and uh, substantially more on the budgetary side of things. And I suppose the silver lining to that, if there was one, was the fact that when we opened up the doors in 2017, we were actually able to include our own malt in blends in our whiskey because we'd been distilling five years previous to that. The reason for the site, the St. James's Church site, was that was the Lyons family, um, that was the Lyons family church. The first funeral Pierce Lyons was ever at was his granddad's funeral and it was in St. James's Church. He subsequently realised he's got nine relatives buried in that graveyard. But the liberties wasn't just important to him because of the, the church side of things. Um, his, he, on his mother's side of the family, the Duns, there was five generations of Coopers before him that all lived and worked in the liberties in, in the wet, in the barrel industry, making, making barrels. Actually, his grand-aunt, um, Molly, was actually the first female Cooper ever registered in Ireland. So five generations before Pierce got involved in the whiskey industry, he had, uh, the coopering side of things was, was always there and was always spoken about. He always heard about this whiskey business. Uh, as you may know, Pierce uh, suddenly and sadly passed away two years ago. But his son, Mark Lyons, um, is watching very much and very much operationally involved with us now in the distillery. Um, Mark himself has got a master's in brewing distilling from Harriet Watt and like his dad did a PhD in yeast and biochemistry. So when we make whiskey, we put it into our own barrels. We'll get into a little bit more of that when we're chatting through the whiskies. We get to put it into our own barrels. But if we go back to the start, all the yeast that we use to distill our whiskey are proprietary strains of yeast that we cultivate for our own um, whiskey usage. And we have that luxury to be able to do that because of the mother company is a yeast speciality company. And I suppose it is important to know, and that's why I want to mention Mark Lines is very much involved with us now, that um, the Pierce Lines Distillery is very much 100% family owned, 100% family run, an independent distillery. Um, and I suppose our, our philosophy is, is about quality rather than quantity. You know, even when we're making, I mean, when you go into the distillery, um, it, it's, a, it's a full working distillery. Everything is done on site except for the milling of the grain and the casking of the new make. So the, everything as you'd expect to see is just done on your right in the brew house and then it's put onto the stills and then it comes out the back. And, and out the back, we will uh, bring the, the new spirit, which comes off around 72, 74%. We'll bring that back to casking strength of 63.5 on site, reverse osmosis water as you'd expect. And then it gets taken away from there and then we cask off site. We, every second run of our distillate gets brought to um, a, an opposite location. So we store and cask in two sites, in uh, Stafford's in Wexford and in West, Co in West Cork Distillers own bonded warehouses. Because we do all of our bottling down, at, down in West Cork, so it makes sense for us to have some of our stock down there. So every second run gets brought to either Stafford's in Wexford or West Cork in Skibbereen in West Cork. So that's kind of the rough company overview. Um, and what we've got a fantastic uh, lineup of tastes and flavors and ages and all that kind of thing for us to run through. The first one that I'm, go I'm going to nip, I'm going to talk about a couple of whiskies. 
I'm here to be, you know, ask all the questions you want. I suppose um, I would be very much involved in the, in the cask program, in the blends for the whiskey. So if you have technical questions, feel free to ask them all. There's no problems. And then Michael will take you through also the flight of whiskies. So we're going to start with our new make. So on your uh, sample number one, it is not water, as it was alluded to on the uh, Twitter sphere during the week. So that is not for, for watering down your whiskey with. Um, it's actually new make whiskey. Now, what's exciting about that new make whiskey for us is that um, it's actually the end of a certain campaign that we're doing. Um, obviously, in distillery, it's not that easy to change everything around your, your whole recipe around uh, quickly. Because obviously, as you know, you have to build up your low wines and, and there's, there's a lot involved in changing it. So we move from malt. Um, we do it in different blocks. We move from malt maybe eight months ago. I think the festival is the 18th of June. July. 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 Connor, <laughs> Connor, if you just keep the chat going, I'll, 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 keep it, I'll field all the questions that come in the chat for you so Robert. you can just focus so on. Our, our new mate. On our, on uh, our drinking tonight. And I'll, I'll, field, I'll field the questions for you, keep you, keep you so you don't have to multitask. Guys can multitask. Um, <laughs> our new mate. So what we have here. Um, is a pot still new make. The makeup of this, as I said, it's 63.5, so it is cast strength. So uh, treat accordingly when you're smelling and tasting it. 63.5, the makeup of it, it's 60% malted barley, 35% unmalted barley, and it's 5% wheat and rye mixed together. So just go back in, just, just I suppose, just so you know if people are only taking notes, 60% malted barley, 35% unmalted, and then 5% um, wheat and rye. Now we're finishing that, I think, this week or maybe next week, and then we're moving on to a, a different pot still mash bill, um, obviously with oats, because you, you can't make pot still nowadays unless you're actually including oats in the mash bill. It's, a, it's all the rage, and I suppose it, uh, historically it would have been very uh, one, of, one of the more prevalent grains in, in kind of more recent uh, pot still making. So obviously the, with the, we're sticking within the technical file most of the time and it'll be 5% and then I suppose when we finish a campaign we kind of, we, we might do some experimentation with going off, off the technical spec. So give it a little taste, give it a little smell, I'm going to grab a glass of myself here. There's always a great excitement when you get to taste a, uh, a new make from a distillery because I suppose it's the, you, you get to sample the DNA, the, 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 the new whiskey bloodline that's coming into the market. And what, what is, it, as I said, exciting for us and when we get through, to go through the flight of whiskies is that in, I'm looking at the whiskies here, well, in five, in five out of the sample, in five of the bottles that you have in front of you, there's been whiskey partially or wholly distilled on the stills that you see in the church. So when we finished distilling in Carlo, we moved the stills from Carlo up to St. James. And Jack O'Shea was our distiller, uh, the infamous Jack O'Shea. He might even be on here tonight, I don't know. Uh, an, ab an absolute character, infamous in the, in the Irish whiskey world. Jack O'Shea was our head distiller in Carlo. And Jack was there for the commissioning um, and, and the setting up of our St. James's Church site. Um, so the process, obviously the brew house is different, but the process is as close as we could to replicate what we've done in Carlo. But technically, uh, uh, the whiskey that we made in Carlo is now from a dead distillery. It's, it, it's a lost distillery, closed distillery, whatever way you want, whatever terminology you like to use for it. But that distillery doesn't exist anymore. So now what's going, coming out of St. James's Church is obviously from the new distillery. So technically, it's two different distilleries, but the spirit is distilled on the exact same set of stills. I mean, I'd love to hear people's thoughts on the new make. I'm, I'm not mad for telling people what they should or shouldn't taste because it's always an inception kind of moment. If I, if I say one thing, you'll, people will start thinking about it. But always with new make, give it a smell, give it a taste. Um, and then maybe add a little a few drops of water to it until it's a little bit more comfortable and you start um, releasing some more of the, the, the more subtle notes from, from your spirit. 
It's very subtle at 63% here. Yeah. One of the things, uh, one of the things that I love from day one is wh when I tasted our malt whiskey that we're producing in, in St. James's Church, I've been lucky, and I suppose like a lot of people here, I've been lucky to be exposed to the whiskey industry for quite a while. And I've got to experience new make from lots of distilleries. And genuinely our malt new make, I'm not saying our pot isn't, our malt new make is as good as I've tasted from any country, from any set of stills anywhere. And at the start, as you know, we, 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 we mixed around the mash bills. The reason we go, we, we did go lower on the unmalted barley, but we found that it didn't suit or still configuration or, or brew house sort of things. So that's why we, we upped it to 60% malted because it allowed us to create the wash that we needed to create the spirit that we wanted. So I think, I think we've nailed, obviously we've been running that campaign for quite a few months and uh, the, the, the liquid is really good, super clean. Or, and that's one thing about our spirit, because of the four rectifying plates that we have, because of the, the large ball and neck, on the neck on the wash still we get a lot of copper contact as, as as you'd expect from something like that and the large and the large um ball on the on the neck of the first still on the wash still and with the four rectifying plates that creates a lot of reflux and reflux allows us to keep pushing down the the lesser favorable compounds and only be drawing off your lighter fruitier notes i saw the word fruit coming up a lot of that is to do with a combination of obviously the recipe of grains but also the yeast that we use. The yeast that we've picked, uh, that Pierce Lyons, to be fair, picked uh, for his distillate, allows a lot of fruity notes, uh, allows his really fruity esters to come through, but still quite balanced. You, you can still taste quite a malt forward note on that new make, but you're getting a lot of fruit as well. Not, not, not as kind of heavy dark fruit. Sometimes with, with pots of new makes, I'll get a much more um, darker fruit, uh, you know, almost like your, um, your, your dark berry notes sometimes off new makes. I don't get that off this, but, uh, but I do get a, a nice, there is a nice balance of richness of malt and of fruit, but that's, that's up to yourselves to tell me what you're getting. Connor, um, I, I've been lucky enough that when I was in the story, uh, there was a couple of sneaky samples of new, other new makes and uh, sort of experimental stuff that we probably shouldn't talk about, but I've mentioned it now. Um, <laughs> But also there, I, you know, is there any plan to release a new make in a bottle or a la protein? Uh, or is that something that's yes or no, essentially? I have, um, no. It was no. the same <laughs> no. And, and there's a very simple reason for it. It's, only, it's, it's because we want to focus on the whiskey and we, don't, um, there, we just don't make enough to keep selling it out as a new make starting off. We want, um, thankfully, um, Pierce Lyons left us in a situation where he wanted the whiskey to develop. He wanted the whiskey name and the brand to develop. And, and by, you can only do that if you're laying down a substantial stock in, in good barrels and just thinking of whiskey as the long game rather than a kind of a quicker return. Just a quick one there um, on the distillation, double distillation, yep. triple distillation. It's obviously an interesting setup behind you there because yep. you've, got your, your, you've got your wash still. And then it goes into the yep. that rectifying still. So that rectifying still is the second distillation, but at the same time, you know, you've got four plates in there, so it's almost like pot still going into column still. So, so you know, it's it's not really double distillation. It's not really triple distillation. It's there's probably a lot more going on there, really. But uh, technically, what what is it? Um, well, it, technically, it is double distilled. That that that's what I said. I mean, what the, we we don't basically. The plates are there, we don't rev them up, if you know what I mean. We, we don't use them to distill to a very high ABV. We yeah. don't, we, well, the spirit comes off only at 72 to 74. So we're not, we're not using it as a column, we're using it to create more reflux and to create more copper contact and to create a purer spirit coming off, off, off the back. Um, now we have played around and laid down different spirit um, by kind of, I suppose, you know your spring bank kind of scenario where you might 2.8 kind of times the still. Sometimes we have run the spirit from the, or the new make from the spirit still, back, uh, held it into the wash still, run it through the spirit still again, or dropped it into the low wines tank and distilled it again. Just, play, just playing around with different ways. I mean, 
in theory, if you ask us what ways are spirit distilled, it's double distilled. But sometimes we have kind of run it a third time through the spirit still, or like a second time through the spirit still to give it a third distillation, for want of a better word. Just and again, looking at that there, it's, it's you know your big head makes that equipment look very small. Is it is it is it, is it really that small? Like how 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 much do you distill? How many like you you don't fill barrels every day, or how often do no. you feel like you know? Because it's it's you're probably one of the smallest distilleries in the country. Um, we, if we, and we haven't, well, we're nearly going to, if we go on a double ship, we could produce about 600,000 LPA. Um, at the moment, we're probably in or around 60% of that, 60, 70% of that. Um, it's actually not distilled. We actually managed to lay down a huge amount of stock while we were in Carlo because we had an endless supply of wash, basically. Because obviously we had a huge brew house behind us in O'Hara's. Um, our stills could produce quite a lot um, if you continually keep them on. The only thing that slows us down is actually the brew house side of things because it, it wouldn't be big enough. We've got five steel fermenters, so that, so, and then it gets moved from the steel fermenters once the yeast is kind of kicked in into the open top fermenters. Then, then we ferment that, all, the, all the sugars that you can get out of it. Out of it. Um, our beer wash, uh, our beer or wash, ends up being about 7.5% before we put it into the wash still. So we don't, we don't look for yield. We don't look for, I mean, if you're looking for yield, you'd be trying to get a, a 9% wash or even, even more if you could. So we're brewing it low uh, to keep flavor in it and we're, we're distilling it slow. One slow. Sounds like American barbecue. <laughs> it kind of, kind of does. So there, there's a, there's a, there, where do you get your water from? And does it, does it matter moving from Carlow to Dublin? Um, you've hardly got a, a well digging down into the, uh, up in Dublin 8 there. Or and you, if we did, you, you wouldn't want that it. microbrewery across the road from you. <laughs> no, um, all the water that we, uh, we use literally mains water. I mean, you could say, oh yeah, it comes down from the Wicklow Mountains and all that kind of nonsense. When you're making beer, your water is imperative. I mean, it, it's so important when you're making beer, it's insane. When you're making spirit, um, your water isn't as important. And all the water that we use is reverse osmosis treated. So we start off with pure water. It's demineralized water to start off with. So, I mean, you, you can use RO, reverse osmosis, on horrible murky water or tap water, and the water will come out the exact same way at the other end. It'll, it'll be demineralized, it'll be a pure source of water, and that's it. We just use pure water. That we 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 have a plant on site that does the reverse osmosis. I suppose what you don't see and what you might have been brought around, Michael, you might have seen the, the it all looks pretty inside, but on the yeah. back left corner there's a there's a whole plant section uh, where where the mechanics and uh, your, we we use two types of cooling. We use glycol cooling and we use air cooling. Um, obviously, you've you've your waste water tanks, your water purification, and your mortar treatment, and it's all done at the back of the distillery. You don't see it. Sure. Sure. What does everyone think of that? You feel free to use the chat function to tell us about your whiskey or ask any any questions. And uh, if, if you want to, you can unmute yourself as well and ask questions. Uh, unfortunately, if everybody unmutes themselves at the same time and start chatting, we'll have to mute you all again. But you, you can jump in if you wish, uh, ask Connor uh, and any questions. Um, is it time to move on to number two? And move, yes. move on to whiskey. Oh, right. What I would love to do is swap number two for number three. Go for it. I just got a taste of them there. <laughs> so is this going to put the cat amongst the pigeons? Are we going to, are we going to cause consternation? No, if it was towards the end when it was five and six, then it might be a bit more difficult, but we're at the beginning. <laughs> so, we'll go so we're going to skip two for a second, and we're going to go with number three. And there's a reason for that. Just let me know when you want me to hold up the bottle. I have it here ready to go. Excellent. Right. We're going to go with number three. And I suppose the reason that you want to go with number three is that it was the, um, it was the first whiskey that we came out with that had only our own malt in it from Carlo. So we brought this out in 2017 uh, towards the end of the summer. 
it, there was 1,000 uh, cast drink bottles and there was 4,046 ABV bottles. The reason, one of the reasons why this was very interesting was, I suppose, it surprised a lot of people who didn't realize that we'd actually been distilling before. And it was actually our own, our own it's 46% that it was actually our own spirit that we used in, in this five-year-old. And also, um, to put it in timeline terms, um, we would have been the sixth distillery to start distilling on the island of Ireland back in 2012. Obviously, with our, with our Bushmills before us, with our Jameson, with our Cooley, um, then you'd Kilbegan, then you'd West Cork, then you'd ourselves in 2012. Yes, we skipped number two for a second. We're on number three. <laughs> I knew I'd do this. So when, when, when we came out with this five-year-old and, and we put an age statement on it, it would have technically been the first new five-year-old age statement whiskey to be released from a new distillery in almost in 25 years. Um, obviously, there was some new, there was new whiskeys came out before us, but not as an age statement and not at five years old. With this whiskey, what we did was we brought it out with a lot of second fill barrels. The reason we brought it out with a lot of second fill barrels was we wanted to show the spirit character before we started using major wood influences. This here, when we smell it and taste it, um, it's, it's going to be light, it's going to be citrusy, it's going to be biscuity, it's going to be almost peppery. I get a, I get, I get, I get a peppery, spirity kind of note in the front of my lips when I taste this. Um, it is... As I said, it's 100% uh, our own distilled whiskey from Carlo. And the barrels, I mentioned we were a sister distillery in Town Branch in Lexington, Kentucky. All the bourbon barrels that we use to age our whiskey, not just the bourbon, all the rye, all the, um, we don't use the malt barrels more over there. So we use the bourbon, we use the rye, but we also use Kentucky bourbon barrel ale and Kentucky bourbon barrel stout barrels. And I suppose, us having that access to our, uh, you know, our own sister distillery. I just literally pick up the phone to Mark, the head distiller over in um, Town Branch. I ask, hey, Mark, how's it going? When are you discouraging again? He tells us, we organise transport, the barrels come straight over. Simple as that, and as fresh as that. Um, so we taste this. This is very much aged in kind of second fill barrels uh, with some first fill. And it was just to show off, I suppose, the spirit character, because it is a new whiskey DNA. And we want people to, I suppose, be able to get involved in, in the journey, as with the aging journey, because that's what whiskey is. Um, so we'll smell it, we'll taste it. Forty-six percent. I don't like telling people too much about, but there's all I mean, things that do stand out a mile. It's distinctively malty. Lovely lemon citrusy, lemon biscuit, lemon drizzle. I, I do get a lot of citrus in this. And I get a lot of lingering spice. It's quite spicy, it is, yeah. Yeah. I do get a lot of spice out of that. Yeah. Very spicy. And I suppose, and when it's at, I mean, maybe not after the new make, but I always get like a, a white peppery spice on my lips. Um, like you would do, you know, with the, with the Powers blends of the 70s and stuff like that. Just like this tingly kind of white peppery note in the front of your lips. I always get that kind of peppery note. And it's funny because some whiskeys kind of dance in the back of your mouth and, or the front of your mouth. This one kind of, kind of comes to me on the lips, but then a lovely kind of three quarter length finish warming down the back of your neck and not, not quite down into your chest, not a full finish, but a lingering finish around your neck. And it's a very light, very clean, very pure spirit. And it, and it was, and it's all um, town branch bourbon. But oh, this, the, um, I saw what's the blend. Uh, we're on number three, so this is the single malt, hundred percent single malt, um, Carlo distilled Pierce whiskey. So this is this is no longer available, is it? You know. Uh, it was released in as a small batch, four thousand bottles in two thousand. Four thousand bottles, yeah. So that's ne and nearly three years ago now. And this bottle was three thousand three hundred and thirty-eight, so there wasn't much left after this one. Um, no, and uh, 
Yeah, they're, they're, you could find the odd bottle lurking around the back of a super value shelf. Um, yeah. And I suppose, and we focused on changing up our blends and we're going to be going back very soon to doing some very interesting um, straight up single Carlo single malts in the very near future. So you can keep an eye out for them. Um, I'm going to have one more sip of that. So, just to add to the confusion, we're going to go back for a third whiskey. We're going to go to sample number two. Oh, uh, here. <laughs> no, normal service will resume after this. I suppose I, wa I wanted to take you on the journey of tasting the whiskey in its own right. Because this is the component whiskey that we've used now in our five and seven year old and our and the last whiskey that is yet to be named. So it's important, it's important for you to taste that in its own right before we start using the blend. I hate to say it, it has, it has a good, uh, it hasn't, it's very malty, it has a nice earthiness and I can see this being a really good, as we go through it, as you say, this is part of the next few whiskies as well. It really has that big malty background. It's, it, this is going to be, this is like the DNA, isn't it? This is like, you're going to exactly. taste, this is going to be the backbone of what we're going to, what's coming up. Not number two, but number four, five, and six, I think. And then number number two, which is number two, which is our third whiskey this evening. <laughs> and the, the five-year-old blend. So that'll be interesting. And um, Connor will tell us, uh, and Michael will tell us about what's actually in that blend, what's there, what, what type of style of whiskeys are, are in there, and what, uh, if you're allowed to, where they were sourced as well, I suppose. Absolutely, we'll tell you everything. But I'm, but for for this, the next couple of whiskeys, I'm gonna. I'm going to start keep on sipping on my uh, five-year-old single malt because I haven't pulled it out in a long time. And I'm going to let Michael bring you through the uh, five, seven, and twelves there. But I'm here for questions, of course. Um, yeah, so uh, first of all, it's really nice um, to be involved in this. It's also really nice not to be in uh, L Mulligan Whiskey Shop because I did spend about four months in there. So it's nice to do a tasting that's not in, inside the bloody place. Um, I've never done a minute was work when you were in there either. Well, I, I, I was just joining in with everybody else. Uh, <laughs> uh, it was a good Christmas. A <laughs> it was a good Christmas. Um, so, yeah, so we're going to talk about the Pierce uh, 5 blend. Um, for me, uh, I absolutely adore this whiskey. Very, very different from your usual Irish whiskies. Um, I suppose, just to give you, the, I suppose, the breakdown of it, it's a 34% malt, uh, and the rest is grain whiskey, which we source from West Cork. But just to put that in context, because you know we put all our malt into um, Town Branch Barrels, but all of our grain that we get from West Cork as well goes straight into uh, Town Branch Barrels as well. So we're not, you know, I, I, definitely the grain is West Cork grain, but it is going into our barrel. So from the moment it comes off the stills, it's starting to get our influence. And of course, when we're selecting that grain, Connor is hovering around in the background, making sure that it's exactly what we want down there. Um, uh, let's have a little nose of it, I suppose. Um, and I can talk us through it as we go on. Um, what's really unique for us about this, uh, and it comes really true on the nose for me, is uh, one of the things we make in Lexington is, Connor talked about our bourbon um, barrel ale, but we make a bourbon barrel stout. So um, our bourbon barrel stout, again, with Dr. Lyons, he's, he, was, he, was, uh, he just loved mixing things up. So one of the first beers he made over there was an Irish style stout. Uh, but of course, he stuck it into bourbon barrels. So we use those barrels to uh, mature this whiskey in. That Those barrels are going to impart a chocolatiness, a smokiness. Um, they're going to bring a big roundness to what is a relatively young whiskey. So the age of this whiskey is five to seven years. Um, and you'll get that on the nose. You get that chocolatey smokiness on the nose. Mm. And okay, if we have a little taste of it. What's very strange for me is, even though there's a chocolatey and there's a smokiness right to the front there, right behind it, there's a citrus that comes through that's absolutely fabulous. Really, really kind of refreshing whiskey. 
and um, yeah, it's quite it's quite a unique whiskey. Like when when I've tasted a good few whiskeys, not as many as uh, young Michael there, but um, I I I've never really tasted an Irish whiskey quite like this. Um, it's really refreshing. Um, that citrus comes through. There's green apple. There's it's quite it's it. There's a bite to it. It's really really refreshing whiskey. Um, okay. Does anybody have any questions on that? Like, cause our, our, uh, I, I'll have to, uh, oh, hay on the nose is very good. I'll have to uh, talk to Connor a little about how much of the um, uh, stout barrels are in it. I'm not really sure, but it's good. It's a good proportion of them, isn't it, Connor? Half. Oh, so oh. Uh, yeah. Of, of, of the 34% malt, half has been aged in the stout barrels, but not as a finish, as a full component whiskey. So when we add this in, it's, it's added in as a whiskey that's been aged in stout barrels for five, six, seven years. That, that's, that's interesting that you're, you're, you're doing that. You're, you're putting whiskey in your beer barrels, obviously, because you've, you've got great access to them. A lot of people don't. Um, on that note, is, is there any plans to release there's, there, uh, there are a few other brands that are releasing uh, whiskey in, in, in different barrels. I mean, uh, as long as you don't do IPA, because I think any whiskey has gone into IPA barrel, uh, you know, should be poured down the drain. Uh, <laughs> personally, thought it would taste disgusting. Um, but I, I actually do like whiskey in stout. There's been a couple of different brands out there who have matured in stout, and you do get that little bit of difference, that chocolatiness, that little, not smokiness, but you, you know what I mean. It's that earthiness almost. Uh, is there any plans to do something like that with Pierce Lions or is it the core? Um, yes, but what we do with the stuff that we have laid down is actually inside in the barrels of um, stout barrels and different types of stouts. I won't ruin any surprises from the Pierce Lions Brewery in Dundalk. So the barrels that we bring over from the USA, the Kentucky Bourbon Barrel Ale and the Kentucky Bourbon Barrel Stout Barrels that we age our whiskey in, that's what we use to age the whiskey in, just to tie in um, Pierce Lines a story from Kentucky to Ireland and use what we have at hand and then the beer aged whiskey that we've laid down is actually from the Pierce Lines brewery in Dundalk so when that comes out that's where that will be from. I'm actually glad you mentioned the brewery right so just to get into the swing of things tonight I went and bought some Fox's Rock beer and it wasn't cold enough so I done that stupid thing where you put a bottle in the freezer so Brilliant. I'm just going to run to my freezer now and grab that thing out of there before it explodes. And I'll let you just crack on. Uh, I really hope you got the um, uh, uh, the Session IPA because that's absolutely fabulous beer. Um, while he's not here, why don't we move on to the seven-year-old? Um, somebody did ask, that, you got the lagers. That's the lager. I think. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm a connoisseur of whiskey, but I would be the greatest... When it comes to beer, and look at that weather outside. You know, that so is beautiful. It's, but it's and, nice to anyway. <laughs> and gluten free, just so you know. Um, well, yeah. So we'll, go, we'll move on to the seven year old, I think. Um, so somebody asked a question, I seen it pop up there, uh, asking what's our flagship for the Pierce range? Well, I suppose really our seven year old is our flagship um, because, again, it, 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 it tells our story. Um, straight through um, the malt content in it I'm just going to grab it here behind me the malt content in it is, is a little bit higher so we're talking about 36% malt here um, I think it is a sample four it, uh, Michael will have to tell us that sample four yeah is the seven year old it's sample four and it's 43% ABV mm -hmm. so uh, the casks we use in this we use some of our uh, Kentucky Bourbon Barrel Ale casks. We use some sherry cask, Oloroso sherry cask. And like I said, 36% 36, uh, 36 malt. Uh, the rest is obviously grain. And what I love about this whiskey is the nose on this whiskey is spectacular. It's big, it's luscious, it's round. Our malt is starting to tell its story now. So I definitely on this one get... Um, more of the five-year-old single malt that Connor was tasting earlier on, I get that coming through as part of the story on this, especially on the nose. And it really does seem to um, push forward the sherry. 
that fruity, slightly peppery. And if we have a little taste of it. I'm hoping I really like this because I've got a full bottle in front of me to drink for the rest of the evening. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, for, for me now, like this is, when I do tastings with this one, this is the one that most people go, it's most relatable for them. It may not be their favourite, it may be their favourite, but it's their most relatable. It's the one that most people have something to say about. Um, oh, the spice that comes through there at the back of the palate is lovely. Uh, there's so there's 34 percent in the five year old, but there's 36 percent in the seven year old. Um, does anybody have any more questions for that one? You get quite a bit of banana off that. It's, um, I don't know, it's a thing for me, Bizarre yeah, enough because I don't even eat bananas, but <laughs> <laughs> I always that that's a, it's just it's a strange thing for me. I think when we were doing a tasting the other night, Connor, somebody mentioned overripe bananas, and it is. yeah, yeah. It, it does come true on it. It's it's a beautiful it, like that overripe banana flavour is very much a luscious, big, robust flavour. I just thought you. Know, I'm looking at Connor here now on my screen, and he looked like he wanted to say something, and now I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can say something if you want. I suppose, so, just, just a quick one there, guys. There's a. Some of them might mention a bit of spice and all. Also, are we uh, all bourbon barrels here, or is there any any play around with anything different? I know you've mentioned that there's beer barrels. Yeah. Um. What 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 have you got weighed down? Is it is it all is it all Kentucky bourbon, rye, etc.? Or have you you know you've also got your beers from up in Dundalk? Have you got any European oak in there? I'll, I'm going to hand this over to Connor because Connor does be fluting around between Stafford's and West Cork, and he doesn't tell <laughs> any of us anything, so I'm recording this for the bosses. Someone's <laughs> mentioned the Jinsky. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, this seven-year-old, uh, as we mentioned, it's Kentucky, um, half the malt is Kentucky Bourbon Barrel Ale, half the malt is Town Branch Bourbon, and then the remainder is grain that's been aged in um, um, Town Branch Bourbon Barrels and Oloroso Sherry Barrels. And I suppose that, that, that's one thing to note. Even this is a, uh, an age statement seven year old, but it's a seven to nine year old uh, blend. The grain in this is of the older, the grain in this is a, a coolie grain. And what, what's, I suppose, important to note for us is it, back in 2014, because we're going to hit on to something older in a minute. Back in 2014, any grain or malt that Pierce had sourced got recast into town branch uh, barrels, be it uh, the beer, the rye, uh, the malt, no, actually not the malt, the beer, the rye. Um, we use some virgin. So everything that we've uh, put together has had some time of their life, be it, even when it's sourced, inside in our own um, town branch barrels. And that's actually quite important when Mike does the 12-year-old. Um, Mike was saying I'd be fluting around with stuff. Um, <laughs> so... You're on I'm still getting sacked. <laughs> you know, in the very, very, very near future, there'll be something come out that will have a, um, a, a very interesting involvement with European oak. Um, and it'll be a nice, a nice collectible bottle at a very reasonable price. But, it's a, <laughs> but no, there's, there, it, it is coming out. It grand. Um, Big, big influence from European oak. It's, it's a quite an unusually put together whiskey, and I'll be excited to uh, walk that in the door to Mulligan Shop when it's, when it's officially ready to, well, before it's ready to rock and roll. So can I just ask you on this one, Connor, just, just yeah. to catch up there a little bit. Uh, you're saying that there's grain whiskey that's been matured in Oloroso. We've grain in Oloroso, we've grain in uh, bourbon, and the grain that was in bourbon, we recast into Town Branch bourbon barrels in 2014. Because that, that's quite unique in, in itself, because the reality is when you're making grain whiskey, you're trying to make something, you're trying to make volume, you're trying to make it cheap, and you're, you're just getting into a barrel, you know, for three years, you know, call it whiskey. So that's very interesting. Like, I, I don't know, there, there probably is other people putting grain whiskey into into or also or sherry barrels or European oak, but it's it's very very unusual to do that. That's 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 quite very unique. 
at the moment, we've obviously, because we've told you, we've um, grain in Oloroso Sherry. And just let me count up in my head. We've grain in five other European oaks that have previously other hosts in them. So there's, we, we, we've, we've, we're doing a lot, um, I suppose, even if you don't distill something yourself, we believe it's important to put your own um, characteristics, your own flavor plan on it, and your own stamp on it. And yeah, we've, without pulling out a pen to count up, about five European uh, oak barrels that have held something else from Europe in them. Brilliant. Great. So there's a lot, lots of exciting plans because um, it's, it's, it's quite bizarre, you know, there's a, a lot of people from, a, from around Ireland on, on, on the event tonight, but there's a lot of people in from, from Dublin as well. And it, it's, it's, it's one of these things that um, I, I, I do even, I, I've lived in Dublin now for 16 years, and uh, you don't visit what's in, on your doorstep, yeah. you know, so you, you, you don't get to see, to see these things like, you know, how many people have been to the, the microbrewery across the road from you? You know, how many people have actually called in? 1.7 1. million a year, I think. <laughs> <laughs> not, not many from Ireland, but, um, you know, so it's, it's, it's great. I mean, I was lucky. Uh, we had our, our Christmas party in your distillery in January for the staff, and it was phenomenal. And we had a really great day. Uh, we should have probably started a bit later because I think we were all gone and b- at home by bed by 10 o'clock or something, you know. It's the earliest finish to a Christmas party I've ever been to. <laughs> but um, it's great it's, it's for people there if you've not been to Pierce Lyons distillery you know once this is all over and the doors are open please do go up there it's a phenomenal it's a phenomenal tour and it's great that you can in the, in the distillery itself behind you in the charts it's you know distilleries look like factories let's be honest you know there's very little new distilleries that are so picturesque and so beautiful as that put in a church and then you know as I was looking, I actually have, a, I'm going to do a, sh- a screen share. I love, I love doing this. This is my, my, my thing uh, on, a, just give me one second. This is my, my thing with my, my Zooms now. That I love to, love to share, the, the share the screen. Um, Be careful. There's nothing, I've seen this go horribly wrong. Uh, this is the work of, <laughs> what, what, what amazes me about, uh, this is a, a, outside of the distillery of Google Maps. You know, you you've invested in the area. You know, McCann's Bar is sort of part of the portfolio now. Like this area, I used to walk past this area like 10, 12 years ago, and it was very run down, it was dilapidated, it was all buildings. And this just looks beautiful now. You know, uh, if you look at that church that had no spire, you know, you, you put one on it. You know, a nice glass one. It's and if you go down the street quite a bit, and as you're walking towards it, you know, you, it stands out. It really does. That stands out to me. It's, it's you know, it's it's credit to. What Pierce Lyons has done to that area because it's it's an area that was a, in massive need of regeneration, and uh, you know you can you can see it, it's made a massive difference. And these things that you know we have seen from working and living in Stony Batter what what regeneration's like, and how things what good things brought to, brought to an area can really do. So it's it's really onwards and upwards. Uh, who's this young chap out here? Oh, he's, dis- like- he's disappeared. Didn't want to be seen. <laughs> I think that's James. But, uh, he's he's gone. He, he must have heard James a runner. runner. I uh, think he was. I think he was going for a, a breakfast roll. That it looked like he was going for a breakfast roll. He looked hungover. <laughs> so it's, it's great I, to see I, the, actually, the, you. Actually, know, since you had the um, since you had the, the the building on the right hand side, so we've the church. Obviously, you saw the church, and on the right hand side, there's a red brick. Um, yeah. facade. There's, there was three. There were three different units there that they included into the site. The first floor of that, uh, those three units, uh, when the world comes back to normal again, is going to be a gin school. We've got uh, eighteen um, m- micro stills there. Uh, the whole shebang is ready to go. It was just unfortunate timing for the world the way things happened. So we've the Haypenny Gin School opening up, and not to go too far ahead of us, the floor above that, there'll be something very interesting and whiskey related come down the line from that one. Okay. So the whole site is going to be um, quite exciting. You know, we, we will have our distillery, our gin school, whatever's above the gin school, and we have a bar downstairs as well. So there, there's, there's a great excitement around that area. And, but of course, uh, obviously, 
having uh, Guinness behind us, having our neighbours row and co. I mean, myself and, myself and Mike on a, more than one occasion have just strolled randomly down to row and co, walked into the bar to have a coffee, of course, uh, yeah. just to say hello to the neighbours. Um, so it's, it's actually amazing to be able to have, uh, where do you have it? Where, where do you get two distilleries on the same street? And we've got a great relationship with the guys down below. We'll be very friendly with, with them. And, it, and I think, I suppose that's the way the Irish whiskey category is. And, 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 and this is, fun, and it's just fantastic that there is such a, I mean, when, when, you, when you go to shows and for people to go to shows all the time, and if you're, if, if you're not in the industry, you think, oh, I wonder all these lads in competition with each other or they're okay to talk to each other. Everybody gets on like a house on fire. It's unbelievable. I mean, Irish whiskey as a category. Is that is, what to tell you? It's only in competition with other whiskey categories. Yeah. You know, you have to roll your yeah. own boat at some stage. Yeah. But the camaraderie is just exceptional. I mean, literally from us walking just down to the Roan Co and just calling in going, hey lads, how's it going? Going into the bar, yeah. chatting. You know, it, it, it's, it's great that we can do that. And it's great that that is the way Irish whiskey is. You Even know, with doing doing free breakfast rolls, aren't you? And free gargle. <laughs> Now, I, I won't say that they haven't given us cast samples while we were down there, but that was for pure R&D purposes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> training. You're like yeah. FSB agents, aren't you? Going in and spying, <laughs> what, are you, what are you getting up to down there today? You know, Don't steal the recipe and bring it yeah. back or sabotage it. Isn't, it, you know? isn't it a great crack that you can do that? You know, that you can just mill, <laughs> down, mill your way down to the neighbours. It's fantastic. And it's city centre Dublin, really, isn't it? It's fantastic. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. It really brings back the heritage of over but 100 I think years ago. That's something that definitely even the late great Oliver um, Hughes would have said, is that there's a massive amount of um, collegial kind of cooperation in the whiskey industry oh, yeah. that doesn't necessarily, you know, exist in other industries where, you know, everybody, a rising tide floats all ships, you know? Well, one of the things that happened just at the start of this COVID-19 thing was I got a phone call from um, one of the guys working down in Liberties. Just going, uh, need your help because bar staff were being laid off. They need forms. So because we were allowed on the road, I, one of the guys went into the office, into our office. We printed off 100 forms. They printed off 100 forms in Row and Co. They printed off 100 forms in uh, Liberties. And we basically kept them in the car. Every bartender we met, we handed out these, you know, for the COVID-19 relief uh, fund. And this was just, somebody just said, like, they just decided because we were all on the same fucking team, we were going to do it. And it was, it was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And I think that that's something really amazing that has come out of this is that, like, you know, that realisation of the interconnectivity of brands and bartenders and all of that, you know, I think it's something yeah. really incredible. Yeah, absolutely. And you also made this stuff as well. <laughs> do you know, do you know what? It's not for public, is it? You, 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 you no, no, no. We never sold the bottle. We we only gave it away. Um, yeah. The I, I guarantee you, at some stage, there will be a collection. After all this is gone and forgotten about, there there will be a distillery collection of sanitizers. Here, I've already, I actually really Michael Carr gave distillery. me two bottles, and I've already sent one into auction. Yeah, so I, <laughs> and I guarantee. It'll be Zoltan that's selling it. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually... No, no swearing that. tonight, please. <laughs> I pitched this as an article, actually. I pitched it as an article, like a side-by-side -side tasting of all the different distilleries. Because <laughs> there's some of them are particularly... Our, our, when, when myself and Mike were up, uh, when, we're, when we're making and bottling and hand-labeling, and by the way, it was, it was us, along with Martin, the head distiller, and John O'Brien, the head brewer, so you, you, that there is no teams of people <laughs> doing stuff, it's, it's us. So when yeah. we were doing it, I actually tasted it just to see. And I understand why they put down, do not drink, because you can actually drink it. It's pretty decent. You know, so, yeah. I, I actually have, I have one from Sleeve League Distillery up in Donegal. And every time I put it on my hands, I'm like, Jesus, I really fancy a gin and tonic. I wonder why that is. Yeah. <laughs> Subliminal messages, eh? Uh, so we're going to take a five minute break we were meant to take it after number three but then uh, we didn't know what number three was because it went to number two and whatnot so just take a five minute comfort break for everybody and then we'll come back because we've got two uh, cracking whiskies coming after 
Uh, one of them that uh, I'm pretty sure a very probably none of you have tried it. In fairness, I know I haven't. Um, so that's a cracker coming up as well. So just it's 29 minutes past. So we'll we'll start again at 20:35. That's okay by everybody. Okay. Great. See you in five. Thanks, Mike. We'll we'll get started on uh, part two. Uh, Michael's going to give us uh, whiskey number five. We're, we're in order now. Uh, whiskey number five is a, a 12 year old and found, founder's choice. That's a blend as well, is it, Michael? Uh, no, this is a single malt. Okay. This is a single malt. Um, so the story behind this is that um, Dr. Lyons basically at the time we're talking eight years ago wanted to get his hands on some really really good whiskies he wanted to put them away he wanted to put them into town branch bourbon barrels and he wanted them to mature and um tell a little bit of story about irish whiskey so um i like to say that dr lyons was such a genius that he invented a time machine uh, and went back obviously more than 12 uh, years to distill this whiskey but we all know he didn't do that. He um, he 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 picked some of the best whiskies from Cooley Distillery, uh, and he put them into Town Branch bourbon barrels. And there's no messing around with this. There's no sherry casks. There's no port casks. There's no uh, strange chestnut casks. Uh, the ABV on this is 43. The ABV on all of our Pierce range is 43, except for the special editions. Okay, so our Five, seven, and twelve are all forty-three. So uh, let's have a little nose of this whiskey while we're at it. And what I love about this whiskey, especially on the nose, is you do get that uh, synergy between that coolie malt, which is a quite a pungent, big malty nose, and the beautiful. Um, bourbon-esque vanilla that comes through from the uh, Town Branch bourbon barrels. It's, 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 a, it's a, a very, very balanced whiskey. Very, it's a big, luscious nose, but still quite soft. Wow, there's a massive bang of citrus off of that. Mm-hmm. Wow, this is, this is, like, I love going on holiday to the, uh, the Amalfi coast in the southern Italy. I'm walking through lemon groves when you're down there and the limoncello and all that. And this this is the nearest thing that I'm going to get to the Amalfi Coast this year. <laughs> it really is, yeah. Loads of vanilla as well. It's it, it's sherbet lemon, really is. It's that. It's beautiful, yeah. Yeah, it's a big, it's a luscious nose. And, uh, yeah. It's fabulous. It's one of those whiskies that uh, you know is all night, but we won't do that. But okay, let's have a taste of it. Oh, it's just absolutely fabulous. To be fair to Noel Sweeney, he didn't do much wrong back then when he was distilling, and then to be put into really, really top quality barrels. It's big, there's a spice there, there's a sweetness there. Oh, it, there's clove, there's, but it's so smooth. It's so smooth. Mm. It's very easy drinking, you know. Mm. Even 43%, maybe a lot bit more, some people are used to, because you know, a lot of whiskeys it comes in at 40%, but um, that little bit extra doesn't, it doesn't do anything, you know. No. It doesn't doesn't burn as as no, no. Doesn't. And there is there's a there's a hint of a bite, but it's only like it's only a reminder that you're drinking. Yeah. It's not a it's not you know it's not a crocodile. It's beautiful. I I think I really do think this is an exceptional whiskey. It's a very much a, a sip in late night sip in whiskey. I, I'm really glad that I have uh, two thirds of a bottle of this one. You know. <laughs> It may not last two thirds of the next week, in fairness. 
Well, for us, it, like we we were so lucky to have access to this whiskey, and I uh, and and Connor will tell uh, about how 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 he got to sit down and taste a bunch of um, Cooley twelve year olds. I've only ever at one time tasted uh, two at the same time, and oh my God, like first of all, the juice in the bottle doesn't matter who it's from, that Cooley 12 year old is excellent juice. To sit down and taste and see what other companies are doing, um, to see what we're doing. I, I absolutely adore what we're doing. And then I taste, I'm not gonna name the other brand, but I taste another brand and they're doing something fabulous as well. So you're taking this fabulous base spirit, you're putting in your own barrels, you're putting your own story on it. Um, and I suppose it's it's, it's a kind of maturity of where Irish whiskey is at, that we have really good uh, old whiskey that can be shared around, that other people can have tell their story about. I, I, I know that, I think um, if Connor is there, I can't see him, but if Connor is there, uh, he was in Germany and managed to sit down and taste four or five of them in a row. Yeah, I was at a trade show with uh, Irish, Marika and irishwhiskies.de and um, I suppose she's kind of the one-stop shop for everything Irish over in Germany. And at the trade show, I had the opportunity to taste five different 12-year-old um, single malts that were all, and there was other ones that had different finishes, but I, I had five different versions that were all bourbon barrel aged, and I got to taste them all side by side. And I suppose all that um, luscious vanilla and everything like that that we're getting here, I suppose, the, the whiskey that's in this wasn't just put into bourbon barrels and left. It was decanted and then refilled back into Town Branch bourbon barrels in 2014. And I suppose Town Branch bourbon uses about 17% rye in their mash bill for making their bourbon. So when I'm tasting this, I'm obviously getting the, the huge citrus notes. I'm getting the, the huge vanilla notes, almost like a creme brulee, really rich vanilla. And it, it's very, very easy to drink. And then you kind of go, oh, wait a minute, there's something else going on. And then you get this lovely ginger and clove spice on the back. And that ginger and clove that I get from this whiskey, I wasn't getting off the other whiskeys, which actually showed me that the town branch barrels in their own right have a different influence on the whiskey. Of course they will. But it was very noticeable. And it, it kind of, and I, and I put it down to the, the freshness of the barrels, obviously, that we can get our hands on. But also, the, the rye component just gives you, the, it comes out as a ginger clove note on the back of your throat with this whiskey. And it's delicious. And I suppose because we call it the founder's choice, the 12 year old, um, Dr. Lyons wanted to um, have an Irish whiskey. And even if it wasn't his own, he wanted to show, I suppose, a synergy between the USA and Irish whiskey. And did this one, because of its huge vanilla notes, would be almost kind of a, a it'd be a, an Irish whiskey single malt for people who are bourbon drinkers generally, it, it, it can bridge people across because of the richness of it, because of the vanilla notes of it. It's a beautiful whiskey, it really is. It, I, I, don't, I, I don't really want to care for age on a whiskey. I'm all about what's in the bottle. Um, and so far, you know, I know it is the oldest one tonight uh, so far, but it's, for me, that's, I, I, know, I know it's not, uh, from the, from the from the Pierce line distilled stock, but it really is. It really stands out. It's a really it's a really credit to the brand that you have such amazing liquid and that you can, like you see, you can put your own stamp on it with your own barrels from your from Kentucky. Um, it, it sort of shows a sign of things to come that in a few years time when you start bringing out your own twelve year old, we can we can see what you're going to bring out with some amazing whiskey that is distilled in behind your corner. You know, so it's absolutely phenomenal. So. We've got a lot. We've got a lot to look forward to from uh, from you guys, essentially, haven't we? Well, I'm finished talking almost now, but uh, and and you you made a really good point there about what we our future uh, uh, making whiskey, and I think uh, as I hand over to Connor and we talk about our next whiskey, for me as somebody who who got to sit down with Connor and taste it. Um, it's for me this next whiskey is so unique it's so it's such a story of a whiskey it, there's three malts in it and the story of those three malts and the 
personality of those three malts really, really comes through. Um, so, and and this last whiskey is one of the components in that. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to hand over to Connor now. I'm 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 dying. I haven't tried this in two months, Connor. So, thanks, Mike. So, um. It's sample number six. I'm not going to mess around anymore because I've no nothing else to mix you up on. Sample number six. It's um it's a 44% ABV whiskey, and we we, we didn't name it at, um beforehand, but what we're drinking is what came out just in in early February, before the distillery closed. We brought out a distillery edition, and the distillery edition was what we called a marriage of malt. So obviously, at the moment, there's a lot of people have their own juice and there's a lot of people who don't have their own juice. And I suppose what we did with this was we vatted together our own malt and sourced malt. And when this popped out in the market, um, it was the, the first vatted malt we'd seen in, uh, well, as long as anybody can remember. And then the Liberator, um, pretty much at the same time, brought out another vatted malt. And I suppose what's important about a vatted malt, it shows a coming of age of Irish spirit where we've got multiple sources now of liquid that we can bring together. And, and I suppose it, it shows a certain point, a turning point in Irish whiskey where we now have access to multiple sources that we can bring things together. So Dr. Ly Pierce Lyons was always a man about doing things differently and, and try and be in the spirit of innovation you know, was the first guy to do malt in Kentucky in nearly 100 years. Um, so when we brought out this whiskey, we used um, Cooley malt as another way to work with our own spirit. So this is a vatted malt. It's 65% um, six or six-year-old, so just a step up in age from the five-year-old we tasted at the start. And I think you'll taste the, the linking in DNA flavor profile from it. So it's a six-year-old Carlo malt. 65% of the bottle is that, and it's been aged or finished for one year in PX casks. So we got a European oak um, and with a sweeter wine on the back of it, but not too much that it's gone into the sweet realm. We still, we're very much about showing off the spirit side of things because it, because what we have is different. So it's 65% um, Carlo distilled Pierce malt. It's 27%. Literally 27%, but a slightly older version, 13%, uh, or sorry, 13 year old um, Carlo. What we just drank is a 12 year old. We used 27% of it as a 13 year old all bourbon barrel aged malt. So a slightly bigger brother to what we just drank. And then also, there's a small little bit, there's 8% of a 15 year old Carlo malt that was fit also finished in PX. For nine months. Connor, can I just correct you? It's not Carlo malt. Um, Cooley malt. Cooley. Oh, sorry. Yeah, the, sorry. The, the, the six-year-old is Carlo. You've been drinking Carlo. too much tonight, pal. <laughs> <laughs> pardon me. Pardon me. Actually, we had a different taste. Myself and Mike had a different tasting on not even whiskey before this. So that could be it. <laughs> anyway, the six, yeah, the six-year-old, the 65% the is Carlo distilled malt. And then... The other two components are Cooley distilled malt. So there's 13 year old all bourbon, there's 27% 20, of that, and then there's 8% 15 year old um, Carlo distilled malt that was finished in PX for nine months. No, Cooley malt. Cooley. Cooley! <laughs> cool. uh, so there's 15 year old Cooley malt. Is the, the, the remaining small percentage of is, the, is the remaining eight Is the remaining 8%. Correct. You want to get back on the hand sanitizer, pal. I, I, yeah, I know, yeah. I, if there was a problem, I had a quick shot of hand sanitizer while we had to break. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I suppose what we wanted to do with, yeah, what we wanted to do with this was uh, just to show a different way of adding a little bit more complexity to your whiskey. Um, what we, we used the... Um, the 13 year old and the uh, 15 year old, which is only a third of the whiskey that's in this, just to round off or finish a whiskey in a way that you might in otherwise do by using a different kind of barrel finish. So instead of going, because obviously we have got phenomenal flexibility in the Irish whiskey industry, 
um, to use whatever wood we deem appropriate to age or finish our whiskey in. But what we wanted to do with this was to use other spirit as a different way to finish or as a different way to look at um, working with our own spirit and working with flavors. So this here, as I said, it's, it's a, what the older generation that I'd be in, I'd know them as a battered malt. Uh, in Scotland, called blended malts now. Um, I mean, blended malt is a, is a mainstay, is a backbone of Scottish whiskey and Japanese whiskey. Um, but what we wanted to do was just show a different way of putting a different flavor profile on the spirit and, and putting a, a little more, more maturity on it without going straight for the barrel finishes for a change. Um, so do you want to give us a smell, a little taste? I suppose, uh, this is very limited. It was 888 bottles we brought out of this. Um, yeah, it's a battered malt from two, from two distilleries. This one is, it's only two distilleries. There's three components, but it's from two distilleries, Carlo and Cooley. Uh, what we wanted to do with this, uh, as I said, was just to show off our own spirit and to give it a little bit of maturity uh, in a different way. It's no age statement, but it's a six to 15 year old whiskey. So you will taste the DNA from the five year old that we tasted earlier. And you'll also taste that it's rounded out and developed in a different way. There was 888 bottles of this produced. Uh, the reason for 888 is there's been a church on the site of uh, the Pierce Line site now. There's been a church on that site for 800 years. Uh, we're in Dublin 8. And because we wanted to put our own kind of name on a vatted malt, uh, just so people would understand what it is, because we're in a church, we called it a marriage of malt. And it, but it is a vatted malt. And the, the last 8 for the 888 is basically the infinity symbol, the symbol of marriage, on its side. So 888. Uh, and that's how many bottles we only brought out with this whiskey. So, Conor, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let the attendees know tonight that out of them 888 bottles, it was a distillery exclusive. It could only be bought in the distillery, but that can't happen at the moment. So there's a very small allocation that can only be bought by the attendees tonight that will be uh, they'll be sent out a link on Monday uh, that they can buy through our own web shop um, and delivery would take place in a two to three weeks after that. So... If this, is, if you want one of these 888 bottles, yeah, we will send you out a link on on a, over the weekend, and sales will probably start just after that. So there'll be a, there'll be a very limited amount of uh, of this available to you. It will be a first come first serve, but you know we we only sold so tickets for it, so that's how Michael. Much, how much people much. are asking how much it's going to cost. How much is the what? What is the pricing? Do we have that? Well, I, I actually don't even have the pricing because Michael Carr forgot to send it on to me today, didn't you, Michael? So, I did forget to send it on to you, but it'll be about 80 euros a bottle. Okay, so there we are. Oh, and I, I, I suppose for something that's, you know, a distillery edition, the first known vatted malt in Ireland in forever, forever and until someone can tell us that there was another vatted malt before, and quite a historic bottle. Uh, I like your style. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's the price. Why, eight, why, eight, eight, eight. Never say no. There you go. That's the price. <laughs> if you want to give eight quid more, Michael will take it off you gladly. <laughs> <laughs> so, but this is, it's, it's, it's still got a youthful spike along with a lovely richness. You get your dried fruit <laughs> notes. I mean, as you keep on, what I said to the guys when, when we started tasting this whiskey first, this whiskey, uh, you know the way some whiskeys benefit from a drop of water. This whiskey benefits from a bit more air. Okay. When you get when, when when this is exposed to a bit more air, you 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 kind of you lose the youthful spike, and and the more deeper uh, fruits will start coming out. There'll be dates and figs and all that sort of thing will start coming to the surface. But as it again the way our spirit works, there's a, again a beautiful spice, long lingering. Um, spice with delicious fruit notes. This, this is a really long finish, and it finishes long in your mouth. Absolutely, almond, marzipan. So it's a lovely, it's a lovely whiskey. whiskey. Yeah, I, I really like it. Um, this has been recorded and is going up on YouTube tomorrow. So I just want to make an announcement to anyone who's watching on this in YouTube or on uh, Dave in five years' time. The offer expires <laughs> within a week. So yeah, you'll have to buy the bottle within the week. <laughs> In 2020 and not 2025 on Dave. 
but this is a, a deliciously sippable, spicy, fruity, um, an excellent whiskey in its own right. Not something to be left on a shelf. Definitely buy it, taste it, enjoy it. And just out of interest, the reason we picked 44 for this, because we were tying in the lots of the distillery into this bottle, we called it a marriage of malt. It was 888 bottles. The reason we focus on using PX as the finish is because of the Spanish heritage of the church. What we probably didn't say at the start was our, uh, our distillery, St. James's Church, used to be the starting point for the Camino de Santiago for Irish people. We use the upside down scallop shell of the Camino in our logo. So we wanted to tie everything church-esque into it. And uh, Pierce Lines, uh, RIP, was uh, born in 1944. So we just wanted to put another Pierce, um, uh, another bit of Pierce history onto this bottle when we were bringing it out because it, it was an important addition to us. And we used the upside down scallop shell of the distillery of the Camino as the symbol on the marriage of malt bottle itself. So it's, this is very much a tie in to our own spirit, uh, our own spirit of innovation and, and the church site that we're in right now. It's a, it's a, it's a lovely whiskey. I, I really enjoyed that there. That was, uh, a lot of people say Mars is pan, and I do get that. It really does have that sort of, you know, it reminds me of that, what is it, Battenberg cake, you know, it's that. <laughs> it really is, you know, it's beautiful whiskey. Gents, uh, many, many thanks for, for, for joining us this evening. No. Uh, uh, it was an absolute pleasure, uh, as always. Great to try some new make and uh, try the marriage of malt that I, I don't think many people actually had. Uh, good insight into the church and a little bit of history on Pierce Lines. Uh, the guy was a legend. Um, there's yeah. no doubt about it. Um, just we'll be talking about Pierce Lines for years, you know, it's, and that's the legacy that he has. It's, it's a phenomenal man he was. It was, it was, it was great to chat to. But uh, thanks very much for, uh, for, for coming along tonight. Uh, so before we finish, people, if you want to ask the guys any questions, you're more than welcome to unmute yourself, join in. Uh, if you want to leave uh, and go drink beer and go and sit in your garden, you're more than welcome to do that as well. Uh, and just a reminder, we'll be taking sales on, on Monday for uh, Powers and Stay at Home too. We'll send out an email on Monday afternoon. Please don't try and break the internet again. It, it, it killed me last weekend. <laughs> so thank you, everybody. And I hope you enjoyed that, and we'll see you again in the very near future. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Connor. Not at all. Thanks, Michael and Connor. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Connor. Thank you. Guys, Thank you. guys, if you do have questions, please feel free to shout them out at this stage, because, like, you know. Unmute yourself. You're more than welcome I'm, to do it. I can't believe Stuart hasn't said anything. I'm, I'm waiting for the good opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Keep muting. I am quiet, Michael. In the background there.